Well, hello everyone. Happy Facebook Friday. So uh, sorry I haven't been able to post for the last couple weeks. I tried to do this presentation two weeks ago. I did it three times, twice on Facebook Live and once as a recording. And for some reason, neither one was a no-go. So um, today I freed up some space on my computer and I'm going to pre-record this so I can ensure that it is up on uh, Facebook. Anyway, today we are going to continue our series looking at the spinal pattern and today we're going to focus on the spinal gallant reflex. And Okay, there we go. Sorry about that. And so just to uh, recap, um, we first started talking about the um, withdraw fear paralysis reflex um, that occurs in utero, the very first reflex that occurs. And then we um, went into the moral reflex, which um, dampens the fear paralysis reflex. This is our fight or flight. This also develops in the womb, but is present after birth. And then we um, continued with the mouthing reflexes, including rooting, sucking, and swallowing. This is the baby's first attempt for reaching. And then we um, started in the spinal, re, uh, the spinal movement pattern looking at the tonic labyrinthine reflex, and today we're going to look at the spinal guant reflex. Um, so just to remind ourselves that the spinal movement is a movement um, that the baby does from the head to the tailbone, you know, and vice versa. It's the initial way that a baby begins to move, wiggling by flexing and curving the spine. The spine moves by flexing, extending, flexing to the side, and rotating. And all the lateral movements or the movements from the limbs are supported by the center, which is the spine. And the baby moves um, from both ends. It moves from its head or its tail. You might uh, recognize when the baby moves backwards. Um, it's moving more from the tail. When it's like crawling, it kind of crawls backwards at first. The reflexes are associated with um, the spine, which teaches the body to roll, um, and beginning to understand the left and the right sides of the body. So um, if you can just imagine, everything is stemming from the center, so the center is very important. So um, let's just take a look at, well, first let me explain um, the purpose of the spinal gallant. So um, you'll see in this video, or here, let me just show you what it looks like first, and then I'll tell you. So the spinal gland is when the baby is stroked in the lower part of the spine, next to the spine on either side, that same side hip flexes upward. So the purpose of that reflex, in, it develops in utero, and it's to help the baby wiggle out of the birth canal. So um, as um, it's feeling the sensations on the spine, then um, the hips flex, and then it can negotiate its way out. And so it's, it is actually really important if a child is born through a C-section, very often will have this reflex um, unintegrated or retained throughout life, and um, which can uh, cause some problems. So if you do have a newborn baby and you did have to have a C-section, you know, whether it was necessary or, you know, because of the doctor's vacation convenience, which um, happens a lot, then um, we want to at least be giving the baby stimulations um, and some experiences maybe to kind of replicate what that should be to help it integrate. Um, so here are some problems that can occur if the um, baby has a retained uh, or has not integrated a spinal gallant as an older child. So obviously a baby, like you just saw, will um, have it present 
but then it should be integrated as, um, you know, uh, not long after birth, in the next couple months. So a child may experience and be hypersensitive to touch and clothing tags, um, hyperactive. Um, if you can just imagine the child in the classroom, the back of the seat might bother them, or if there's anything, let's say, you know, sometimes you put your coat or whatever on the seat, and the things that are touching the back can, um, uh, they don't even realize it, but it's causing um, reflexive uh, movement in the back and can't sit still. Um, can affect auditory processing. They can have difficulties with fine motor skills such as handwriting. Bedwetting is a big one with this. Bedwetting actually has, I would say, in my opinion, um, or from what I know, um, about three um, causes, if you would, uh, if you will. Um, having an active spinal gallant, so when they're moving around in the bed, um, they tend to uh, uh, sleep in a pattern where their butt is sticking up, let's say. Um, uh, so they, um, when they're moving around, the sheets are, um, uh, or blankets are, you know, touching their back, then they can be... Um, uh, stimulated. So it, in that lower part, they can be, uh, um, their nerve, uh, their bladder nerve can be stimulated so then they can wet the bed. However, also if they have a um, an inflamed bladder nerve, so there's inflammation in their nervous system in general and the bladder nerve has inflammation, that can cause bedwetting, as well as food sensitivities. Um, I know both of my older boys were late bedwetters. My oldest um, uh, longer than the other one, but one day in um, my middle one, the one with autism, he, um, not so much, but he did once in a while, but one day both of them, and it had been a while, both of them went to bed at the same on the same night, and it was really interesting because then it made me really realize that it was, um, that one was more due to something that they ate, a food sensitivity, than anything else because that was kind of, um, uh, a coincidence. Um, things like IBS, IBD, um, different kind of uh, issues with the balls, um, ADD, ADHD because of the hyperactivity, um, difficulty with fine motor skills. Again, I don't know why I wrote that twice. I've been meaning to uh, delete that. Making noise to relieve pent up energy. Um, they prefer to work or watch TV on the floor, let's say, to prevent irritation, you know, or this is why um, uh, seating arrangement, alternative seating arrangements in the classroom is so good. Like if they sit on the physio balls, they don't have, um, not only does that develop their core strength um, or balance, but they don't have, uh, or a stool, they don't have that uh, um, back, you know, and um, so sometimes they might want it because they're a little bit uh, lazy and they want, um, but um, sitting without something on their back or laying on the floor is much more comfortable for them. Uh, they might develop uh, speech disorders or spelling difficulties, delayed cognition, poor concentration, and poor short-term memory. So simply, if you want to just test the spinal gallant, you pretty much saw it in the first video, but if you just stroke downwards along about an inch away from the spine on each side, have, the, um, have your child in this position that you see here, that um, my son Andrew's in, and when you stroke down, you'll see um, uh, some, usually some movement in the hips, or um, they could be very, just very sensitive in that area. If they're a little bit older, they might hold it. They might compensate. And um, so you have to kind of ask them, well, what did you feel? Did, uh, because sometimes, um, obviously, they'll feel, feel your fingers. So you have to say, well, did that, they might say that felt strange or weird. Um, so the older they are, the more that they can compensate us as adults. Um, sometimes we even, for adults, we even use muscle testing because we're so good at compensating that we're not going to show the hip flexion. We can just kind of, we can kind of hold it. So the muscle testing will tell us whether or not that was um, good, <laughs> like if the system thought that was uh, strange or not. So the question is, is uh, what can be done? So there are a few things that um, you can do at home. 
and sliding on the back is uh, one of them so I'm going to show you whoops okay so this is a uh, I had an after school group uh, one time so we're doing sliding on the back with the metro where we do our did our exercises to a metronome which is actually uh, very good um, but when they're sliding you're going to see so as you can see the head should be bobbing let's go back here the, um, so you should see movement through the whole body and the bobbing of the head right here just shows that the neck is not tense or stiff if they're sliding on their back um, and there's stiffness in the neck a lot of times um, what's happening is you know that right here in their inner ear is where the um, vestibular system is the balance system so we could be over activating that activating their fear paralysis because there's too much stimulation in that vestibular system um, but generally there should be movement it should be smooth and fluid um, now I'm going to tell you kids who struggle and even all of these boys did not slide like this in the beginning it's very difficult so what you can do is you can be right here by their feet and you can pull their knees or push their knees um, depending how they um, and they can just receive the movement um, that will also help the spinal gallant but it'll also teach their body how it should feel and then ask them if they can continue on their own and you might have to help them for a while but after a couple weeks for sure they should uh, be able to get that um, let's see another one is spinal walking and I'm going to um, share this tutorial I made a while back with um, Andrew just so you can see how to do it. This activity is a child's favorite. It is um, walking up the spine with your fingers. Um, most, some people like different amounts of pressure, but most children like deep pressure. Um, so you can ask them how much, so do, would you like this? Like deeper. This? deeper. Okay, we're going to go nice and deep. And okay, we can walk up like this. I like to go nice and slow. Let them bleed through it. This depends on how sensitive they are. If they're really sensitive, go nice and slow and have them bleed through it. As you can see, he's a little bit sensitive right now, up here at the top. Take a nice deep breath. And we're going to just walk up to the top of the head, walk down, and then if they're really sensitive, instead of using the fingertips, maybe you can use a flat hand. We'll bring the fingertips over around the shoulder. Bring the flat hand nice and firm down back to the starting point. And we'll give nice deep pressure and breathe deeply. And so this can be a sensitive area right here. Nice deep breath. Okay, so he relaxes. Come back up. Come down. He's a little bit sensitive today. Take a deep breath. And around. We're going to do this three times. This can also be done sitting up. And for this little guy, a lot of times what I would do is, let's say we were at church or something, and anytime he's kind of standing in front of me, I would kind of sneak some sensation in and do some spinal walking. Well, he wasn't really paying attention. We're activating the nervous system, the spine, all the nerves that are coming out of the spine, and helping to integrate that, uh, those, that sensation trying to desensitize some of those areas. Great. And then we're going to come up. Two, three. Okay, let's sit up and see how it looks when we're sitting up. Okay, so if we do it while we're sitting up. Alright, so it's going to be 
kind of self-explanatory. It'll be the same thing, but you can do it laying down or sitting up. But kids really like it. Um, you know, when you're laying down, you, it seems like you can put a little bit more pressure on the back. Um, another exercise is rolling the bottom side to side. This is, um, uh, along with sliding on the back, both of these exercises, um, the first one and this one, are from uh, Bloomberg Rhythmic Movement Training. Um, so on this one, as well as any exercise, um, if it's a passive movement where you're doing it to them, like when you're helping them slide on the back, that stimulates um, the brain stem and the movement of the cerebral spinal fluid. If they're doing it on their own, which is called active, then they're just stimulating their cerebellum. So they both, um, now uh, they both can help the back, but you are stimulating different parts of the brain depending on how you do that. This one is rolling, um, okay, sorry, I had the wrong intro on it, but it is the right one. So again, in this group, they are um, going to be, now because I'm filming, I'm not assisting anybody. Um, whenever a child is doing something actively, which means by themselves, you really want that movement to be symmetrical and um, uh, rhythmical and symmetrical. So we're going to see here. So here's my son, Andrew. So we're moving the bottom side to side. And as you can see, there's a little bit more movement this way than that way. So in this case, what I would do is I would go and assist him so his body can, um, you know, kind of learn how to do it rhythmically. And, and this might take a little bit um, because one side is um, uh, tending, uh, uh, trending more to the other side. But, um, but as you can see, they're moving and you should see good movement up to about right here, this part of the spine. Okay, and um, otherwise I can just take their britches and just kind of help them and move it back and forth. This is actually a really good one for young kids because it can help them put them to sleep. So, um, and I have put him to sleep uh, with this before when it was uh, kind of difficult. So just moving it when they're in bed, back and forth, back and forth, helps them put to sleep. Um, all right, and let's see. I don't remember which one this one is. Um, oh, Snow Angels, okay. So this is the classic. Um, uh, if you look up integrating the spinal gallant, this is, you know, a typical snow angels. We'll sh I'll show you in a second. But um, this uh, is an exercise that is very commonly used. It was um, posed by the INPP from uh, England. And um, so this is one of the, the most common ones. And the key to this one is to go nice and slow. So even Andrew in this video is not going slow enough but going nice and slow. Also, if you can do it, if you, especially if they're a boy, if you can do it on a carpet with some tactile stimulation to the back, it's even more helpful. Um, uh, a, a girl just with really light clothes or if, it's, if she's really young and you know, in her room or whatever, she can maybe have, a, a, doesn't have to have her shirt or she can just have a very light shirt where she can still feel some stimulation in her back. Um, just depends on what's appropriate. So here is Okay, in this exercise we're going to have the child do snow angels but very, very, very slowly. So they're going to come up with their hands. And that's not very slowly. So let's say I'm going to count to five. Two, three, four, five. Okay, it's as high as you can go. And down. One, two, three, four, five. Five. We want them to be able to close their feet and close their hands at the same time and have their feet all the way open and hands all the way up at the same time. And this is even a little bit too fast maybe, but for right now we're going to start at this speed and then try to see if we can even go slower. Okay. One, two, three. Oh, are you trying to go slower? Awesome. Let's try to make it a smooth movement. A variation can be the hands are already up, 
and the legs are down. And now we're going to come the opposite direction. Go slowly. Slowly. Okay. And another variation is we can have our hands down. So another variation is we can move these two limbs at the same time. And the other two. And another variation would be to move the opposite ones at the same time. Well, that's moving all of them together, so let's try that again. Try to see what can it, it is hard, this one and this one, all right, so. All right, so do you see how challenging that can be? So, that they would be like, like that. Now, come on. You got to tell me. I didn't <laughs> You did don't move the other yeah, do move the other one when you stop, obviously. Okay, try that again. Okay. Are you ready? Move the opposite side together. That's the same side. Go down. There you go. Come down and then move the other side. Bring this one all the way back down to the other foot. And move the other side. Whoops! <laughs> I'm gonna get the pictures. So this is really good for the spinal blunt, and it's good for the cognitive process and the frontal lobe because he has to decide which part of the body is going to be moving at the same time. Okay. Whoops. All right. So you saw how challenging that uh, can be. So it's not only helping with the um, the spinal glands, but it is helping with the corpus callosum, which um, is the bridge between the two hemispheres, the frontal lobe for the decision making, and try and and all the different parts of the brain. So that's uh, that's a really good one that they can be doing. And you know what? If you have if it's winter and you have a little bit of snow, um, even better, right? Uh, even in the grass, if the child's not allergic to the grass, um, different. Anytime you can uh, give different kind of stimulus different kind of textures is always a good thing. So if you want to learn more about um, how to integrate reflexes using um, isometric integration, then you will want to join me for my next uh, Bloomberg Rhythmic Movement Training Level 1 course, which is going to be in October 26th and 27th. I'm out here in Lehigh, Utah. And um, if you would like to join our membership site, just go to wholechildlearningandwellness.com and there's a tab for membership and, or, oh, I guess the tab is called members area and you can join that and we have a lot of information on different reflexes and uh, things that you can do. So until next week, we should be um, continuing with our um, spinal movement patterns. Um, and until next week, we will see you then. And, um, you know, let me know if you have any questions, if you're trying these with your kids, or even better yet, try them with your kids. Any of these reflexes that you've learned, I would really appreciate it if you took some video and then posted it on the Facebook page. And, um, you know, you could be sharing, uh, showing each other. Um, until next week, um, striving to put children first. Thank you.